Welcome artistic friends to Monet Cafe. Today's painting is called Secret Meadow because it's a kind of a secret where I live now off the road, off a beaten path. And uh, today's lesson is going to be featuring using gouache and a pastel painting on top of it. But I wanted to share some photos with you and just a brief little uh, kind of recap on some of my story. Some of you may know that a year and a half ago our home flooded due to Hurricane Irma and our lives, I don't say it a lot on here or, or on social media, have been very topsy-turvy and crazy <laughs> getting things back together. But I just wanted to share that in every storm, there can be a rainbow and God can bestow his blessings on you in the most interesting ways. And so now I get to see these beautiful views uh, from the land that we live on now. Uh, even though uh, you know we have a tiny home and I've had to move my studio, uh, even my precious Jackson loves it being out in the country. So, just a little preface here to the beginning of the video. And now let's get started. If you saw my last video, I'm featuring the same watercolor paper made by the company Arteza. Arteza, actually, I stand corrected. Arteza. This is a 9 by 12 inch, 140 pound, 100% cotton watercolor paper. And I am very impressed with this paper, so I, I will keep buying it. Now, this is a little set that they sent me to experiment with. It's a gouache set, and it's metallic, okay? So it's got a little sheen to it. And uh, this was kind of an experiment for me. I've never used gouache as an underpainting. I think I will again, but I think I'll use a regular, not metallic. You'll see why. Anyway, these are my other supplies. I will be talking about them. Oh, yeah, and don't forget to get your Monet Cafe coffee cup. All right, let's get started. All right, so here is my Arteza paper that I have, watercolor paper that I've already taped up. I've, uh, that's my reference photo I'm using. That's actually a picture of my front yard where our tiny house is located. And uh, I've taped it up just on the top so that I can lift it and apply water to the back. You'll see me do that and I'll explain why. But I've marked off an eight by 10 area to paint in. And these are the metallic colors that I'm using, the gouache colors, okay? I'm just using three. But I noticed, I'll go ahead and squeeze these out so you can see it. This is just a foam plate. It worked great. You kind of see the little shimmery metallic color. That pink was beautiful. Um, I noticed that these metallic colors, none of them were dark. Um, they were all kind of a medium to a lighter value. So you'll see in a minute I actually use some of the Arteza watercolors. Well, these are all, these three are the gouache. And uh, I did like the shimmer and the sheen to them, but here is the, you can't see it, it's not focused, but it's the Arteza watercolor. It's a nice dark purple, and I'm gonna use that to get my darker values in. And I think I got another dark uh, pinkish color. Yes, that's watercolor. So I'm combining both watercolor and gouache here. And those were from my previous video, the watercolor ones. I did a video using the Arteza watercolor 60 set. You can go back and watch that video if you want. I loved it, they were great. Um, now I've got some paper towels. I'm gonna get started. And uh, obviously in this video, I proved you can combine watercolor and gouache <laughs> together. Um, why not try it, you know? Now in this photo, what I'm trying to enhance, uh, right now I'm just sketching it out. I'm showing that the horizon line is kind of in that lower third. Well, let me talk this out first before I talk about color. Um, I always kind of look at shapes and um, uh, positioning of things uh, according to the dimensions of the paper. So it's kind of easy for me to do big shapes, blocking them in um, and getting them fairly accurate. I need to do a video just on drawing sometime because good drawing skills will really help you with your painting. Now, even though in that photo, the horizon line looked kind of straight across, you're gonna see how I create an illusion of depth by giving those trees like three layers um, instead of just one straight line across. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just wetting the whole paper um, with water, just a pretty good coat of it, um, and it'll start soaking it up, um, but it'll stay a little wet. And the reason that I do this is I'm trying to create a soft effect with this underpainting. Um, okay, this is my watercolor I'm putting on now. It's a, uh, oh, don't put it in your coffee. <laughs> I've almost done that a time or two. Um, this is the watercolor um, that's kind of the darker. I'm doing it in the upper sky because I know that metallic one already looks too light. And in my reference photo, the clouds that are at the top are a little darker. There are some darker ones that are over the tree line, um, but I wanna go ahead and get it. And notice I'm doing big strokes with directional motions. The bigger and freer you can get with the underpainting, the better. And you wanna create that sense of energy and movement. 
you don't want it to be tight and fussy now this is a metallic gouache here and see it's kind of like now gouache is opaque it's not see-through um, but it is still I'm using kind of more water than you typically would with gouache I think I don't use gouache a lot um, but it is blending with the watercolor just fine now I'm gonna go ahead and get that that uh, metallic gouache as the darker clouds that are kind of over some of those trees in the tree line and it is blending in quite nicely with the watercolor um, so this again is about big shapes and values and again the, sh the clouds at the top are typically darker so I just got a bigger you know loaded my brush more uh, with that color now I'm gonna go ahead and get in my darks that's a dark purple uh, and again my papers already wet so these are kinda go on will go on easily and smoothly um, and I don't have to wet my brush quite as much when the paper is already wet so I'm just kinda getting the shape in of these trees um, again kind of keeping directional strokes keeping energy and now in a minute you'll start to see how I have made uh, different levels to these trees now what I'm doing is uh, I've I don't have as much paint on my one well, I'm going back and fixing that but I won't have as much paint on my brush when I go to the second level of trees and what it's gonna do is right there it's gonna make those look further back all this is gonna be enhanced and um, with pastels anyway but again I mention this all the time an underpainting is kinda like a road map there's that second level now there's a third level of trees you see that and way in the back there's gonna be my smaller trees now see what I've done I, instead of doing that straight horizon line across the front I've created a sense of depth by giving different levels of trees um, I'm darkening them a little bit because the illusion is gonna be enhanced even further with the pastels that I choose the values and the colors that I choose gonna really increase that sense of depth now I'm just kinda re-wetting this foreground and um, the, the foreground, the, the land, the flat part there, is going to be darker than the sky, okay? So I'm picking that darker color, and um, I've focused a lot talking about underpaintings and why. Uh, the reason, why would I pick this red color, you know, this reddish pink color um, instead of green? Um, the reason is because it's going to make it vibrant when I do put the green down. Now, notice I put a lighter pink. That's the gouache again. Uh, again, enhancing the illusion color lightens in um, value and uh, it's not as bold or as intense it's a little duller as it goes back to the distance so see already how just almost like a little value study with gouache and watercolor and that wasn't all that hard to do it's kind of fast and simple um, so I'm gonna enhance some things here but my goal this is what I wanted to say before um, I noticed an undertone of pink in that photo I took the photo when the Sun was going down and for some reason the photo captured more pink than was actually in the sky and I thought why not go with it now what I'm doing here is I just flip it over I know you can't see me but I'm applying watercolor I'm not watercolor water to the back of the watercolor paper it will reverse the warp okay so it flattens your paper out a lot of times when you coat a watercolor paper with water it's gonna warp some and this is just basically fixing that issue and I find it works really great and now it may be a little warped when you first get working on this but it uh, in both cases that I've used this paper it flattened out great by the end it was totally flat now here's the magic liquid ingredient clear liquid gesso uh, the clear is the one you want to get don't get regular gesso the clear gesso has the grit and another reason you want oh there's my foam brush uh, just not a wet foam brush just a dry foam brush the other reason you use clear is because it helps you it helps the underpainting to show through you don't want to cover it all up it it clouds it a little bit but not too bad you know when it dries it's even better so just a good coat um, the foam brush helps to keep the gesso very smooth um, so you don't have a lot of texture uh, or lines in it but sometimes I actually like using kind of a rough brush if you want to get that texture in your painting and make it look more artistic but this will give you a good even coat if you'd rather keep that and sometimes I just enhance the gesso a little more on different places so this is pretty much it you've got a quick underpainting um, you've got your uh, clear gesso and now we're getting ready to apply the pastels now these are the colors that I've chosen for the soft pastels I have a variation of greens I have some cooler greens warmer greens greens that are darker value greens that are lighter value to enhance that illusion of that grass going back into the distance I also have some darker value pastels to reinforce the darks of those trees um, I have some uh, lighter values of 
blues and greens to make the trees recede in the distance and of course some of the sky colors and some of the pinks that I'm still trying to enhance in the sky although I've got a nice pink underpainting now so I really kind of get that mood established early on now let's get going with the pastels I am basically the the liquid gesso has dried everything is nice and gritty for the pastels to have something to adhere to I'm going ahead and getting in some of the um, darker value blues that are in those clouds uh, I like to go ahead and get my darks in for the clouds first because often I lighten them up by using a harder pastel to apply over them I lighten them and soften them up so I'm just getting in the darker shapes of the clouds and um, I'm just gonna keep painting here for a while turn on some music and uh, you know me I'll pop back in and add some commentary in a minute you can see that I've been adding my darks and uh, I've been keeping a pretty light touch by the way okay because you can quickly overfill this with just the clear liquid gesso but notice how now I am using the lighter values of tealish bluish greenish colors and even in the far distance those trees will have more of that bluish color um, so again that just enhances that illusion of depth that first tree um, it's kind of the first in uh, in the line of perspective um, so it's obviously going to be the darkest. It's, it's a little darker here than it's going to be because I'm going to add some of those greens I'm holding up right there. Some of those are going there in that middle ground, foreground of trees. And then I'm also going to use a green to kind of soften up the foreground tree. Well, not yet. <laughs> um, now I'm actually getting in some of the lighter cloud colors. Again, just looking at the shapes. Um, try to forget that you're painting clouds and uh, and just paint shapes and also try to keep the shapes going in the direction of uh, the way the sky is moving or at least the uh, the mood that you want to create you, we have this beautiful thing called an artistic license and we can change things um, to create the mood that we want I got the feeling like the wind was just sweeping from the left to the right and upwards um, so I try to keep most of my movements that way all right now it's time to put some green on that ground on the grasses far far distance I'm gonna have like um, some blues like uh, hidden back behind some of those trees and then a paler uh, duller kind of a green uh, gradually getting to a darker green to create the sense of depth um, and some real darks that's kind of a purple there where those shadows are gonna be under that tree um, a little bit of the shadows coming back from the other trees in the distance but mostly you can see I'm working from darker values in the foreground to lighter values in the background warmer values typically in the foreground to cooler values in the background and notice that cool blue I just added that's the shadow side that's where the trees are it was a cooler blue now if you're confused about warm versus cool 
Um, I do have some videos and on this YouTube channel I have my videos now arranged according to playlist. If you go to the section called playlist um, you'll see I have them in groups so you don't have to search through all of the videos. Um, and so I think I have some like on color theory and that's probably where the ones uh, to describe cool versus warm colors. Now, you know, I always look back on my videos and sometimes I see where I'm like, you know, I love that. Notice right now the colors look very fresh. And the more you work, the more you add, the more you lose that freshness. And uh, I did go ahead and, and do quite a bit more on this painting, but I kind of miss that, um, that I hadn't just done a little bit more instead of a lot more. I'm creating a path there, just so you know, kind of to lead the eye back into the painting. Um, and you create like a dark area um, of a like a path of grasses or something whether it's a trail um, but it's mostly just a, a way to um, make the viewers eyes kind of meander and flow from the foreground to the background of the painting and then you just gradually add your grasses and directional strokes on top of that swatch of darkness that you've you've uh, laid down already um, so now you know again uh, Keep it fresh. Don't overwork it. I went a little far with this one, but I really like the mood that I've uh, got going right here. So that's the cool thing about making videos. You get to go back and look at them and go, oh yeah, uh, remind myself to, to back off a little bit. So it's always a learning process, even when you've been painting for a long time like me. Um, but anyway, enjoy this. I'm going to play some more music and you guys just relax. Enjoy the process and I hope you're learning a lot. where I'm going to be using some Blair uh, fixative, uh, low odor fixative, um, just to kind of splatter and spray a little bit. Look, notice how dark that got? That's why you don't want to do it at the end of your painting. You just do it as a, a way to add a little bit more tooth to your painting, so I just let it dry. Now I can glaze over. There's a little more grit to that foreground surface where I applied it. I didn't really apply it to the back. Remember, foreground values are darker. So now it's a little darker and I can, uh, I can without being as muddy, I can add some, uh, some grasses on top of that. And again, it kind of enhances that illusion of depth. So uh, fixative is good during the working phases, uh, but not at the end. I get asked that a lot. And now I'm using a harder pastel, a new pastel, N-U-P-A-S-T-E-L. And uh, these are good for just getting those little wispy grasses. They're harder and they have a harder edge um, so you can get more linear strokes. 
And with grasses, you don't want to uh, overkill or have so many going exactly in the same direction. You want to vary it up and keep it fresh and free. Alright, so I'm finishing up here. This was a fun painting and again another time to experiment. So I hope you learned something and again if you want to order any of the Arteza products there is a 10% coupon code. Uh, it's Susan Jenkins 1 capital S capital J in that. Look in the about section of this video and uh, you can get 10% off until April 25th if you want to order. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Here's the final painting. It was lots of fun for me and it's always great to be with my friends in Monet Cafe. Happy painting!